What's up everyone? My name is Preston Zeller. I'm the Chief Growth Officer at Batch Data. And uh, today I'm gonna walk you through a really cool N8N to N sequence uh, where you can, uh, on a schedule, grab new property leads if you're in the real estate industry and you can enrich those leads and then send them through to um, as a, an Excel file in your email um, or to CRM of your choice. Um, and then you can get a summary of those leads as well and you'll get all the contact information for those leads. So this is perfect if you work in the um, you know, real estate industry, whether you're an agent, an investor, or you work in property services, this is perfect for you. So um, you can see the uh, sequence right up here on uh, this current page that I'm on. And um, if you're not aware of who Batch Data is, I'll just tell you that briefly. We are a uh, real estate data company and so we surface our data through a variety of APIs. So that's what we're going to hit today. I'll go over the um, uh, how to hit the API as well and where to get your, your, your key for that. Um, if you want to find this template, here's where it is on N8N. So if you go search the templates up here and then you search real estate, um, you will see this one, real estate lead generation with batch data skip tracing and CRM integration. <clears throat> and you can use this template for free. So, um, and there's all the directions down below, but let's kind of dig into it. I'll show you how this is set up. Basically what it's doing here is on the left-hand side, and let me zoom in a bit, we have the workflow triggers, right? So uh, this is just saying um, whether it's on a daily schedule or whether you want to execute, execute it manually, it's going to do that here. So I'll just show you the, uh, the daily schedule. So we're just saying, hey, every day at midnight, you set this to whatever you want. Uh, pretty straightforward there. So you could set that between weeks if you want. Um, so if you want right here, weeks, whatever the case is, and that's how that's done. Here's the most important part is that's gonna kind of kick things off is your search configuration. You could do this once a month if you want, whatever the case is. But here's where you're going to configure all your property data. Now, what you have in here, this is going to do an API call. So let me execute the previous node. And you're going to execute an API call um, to batch uh, data. And so it's going to go through a variety of things. Um, it's going to here, we're going to search by city, state, um, property type, the minimum value, maximum value any quick list it's on, a minimum equity amount, and this is how many properties you wanna get back. So depending on how often you're actually pulling this list, you, you know, maybe you want 1,000, maybe you want 10,000, that's kind of up to you. And then here's where you're gonna put in your API key. Obviously that's blurred because I don't want you to see mine. Um, the way you do have to hit our API, it's not sending through the normal um, auth section that you'll see in the next, uh, the next bit. So uh, that's why we have to pass it in there. Now, where are these fields coming from? I'll actually go back here to the search properties API and execute the previous node. So you can see these are the variables that we're pulling in. Again, the API key, you're not gonna be able to see right now, but that's where it pulls in. So this is the API documentation. This is the NP endpoint that we are using for batch data um, to pull this property information. And down here, you're gonna see a ton of different uh, types of uh, properties that you can, um, and I mean, JSON properties that you can queue off of, right? So here's this quick list um, right here. So if I go back to this, this quick list, um, the way this is actually named here is, is really irrelevant. <clears throat> All this is gonna go into this JSON call. Right, and so that's getting um, compiled from all of the uh, calls we put in our first step. And you can modify this to really have anything you want. So quick list right here, quick list right here, right? So if I wanted to add, um, you know, something else like building, I could do that. And you'll have to pay attention to how things are nested. So we have an example of that with valuation, right? Estimated value min max um, in the, let me see, that was in valuation, right? So if I go down to valuation, 
down here, right? There you have estimated value, and then there's the min and max. So it's actually nested a couple times in there. But that's how you'd add new uh, diff different properties to your call. Uh, so uh, of course, we're not gonna include every possible thing in this call because really the point of all the availability of these uh, characteristics is so that you can create a really tailored uh, call and return the types of properties that you want. So in this instance, again, I'm just really honing in on um, some very simple search criteria that's looking at a city and a state. I want out of state owners, also known as absentee owners. Um, and then I want the value between a certain amount and I want the equity between a certain amount, right? Um, or a, the, the minimum equity. And then I only want single family homes. And then this take is how many results that I want to get. So that's a, a pretty straightforward rundown there. We are going to pull this, um, the authorization into this, um, into this field here. So that that's our preset for you. Again, you're going to have to go get your own key. Now I'm going to run this and you'll see that it will return a, you know, pretty giant list of information on the right. It, what you actually get back is a lot more than, uh, what you, call for so this think about on the left is really just the criteria of the types of properties you want but the amount of fields that you get back is much more robust right i mean i can see here you know did they have a failed listing um what's the mls status what's the description that they used at the time for that listing um what's the mortgage balance like all these different kinds of information that you might want um that's that's going to be here so what N8N does is it's gonna call the API, it's getting the results, but what we have to do next is then filter out what we want from uh, that information. So this is um, kind of a similar thing to um, the, the last one in, in that you have to look at what criteria you're actually using. So um, based on the types of API calls here, I'm looking at what are the conditions. So I want the um, recording date for the deed history to be before today. I mean, that's a pretty simple one. I wanna make sure the MLS status is off market and I wanna make sure that the um, open uh, LTV on the mortgage or the L LTV on the mortgage is 70% uh, or less, right? So I'm making sure they have high equity. Again, this is just an example you're probably gonna use it for different reasons. And then if you have a Boolean value, which is they're on the high equity qu uh, quick lists, uh, I want that to be true. And you know, there's actually a number of quick lists that do get returned. And I'll scroll down to that, see there's all these different quick lists. This would be an example of a Boolean value, true, false, versus something like this, which is more of, hey, is, is it a number greater than, less than, or uh, text within a field? So um, <clears throat> I'll test this step and again, modify it however you want, but this is going to, I only pulled two properties, so it's not, not that much, but um, it's going to then filter that down because I only have two properties, pretty straightforward um, on, on how that looks. Next, I have to go through the step where I'm, I'm splitting it out. And all that means is that um, I'm telling N8N to turn this into distinct items. So now you can see there's, there's two items here versus one gigantic item. So depending on how I wanna look at um, the items themselves, you can get all that information. So you're starting to see here, I have columns of information. It's a little bit easier to read so, but now I have distinct entities. That's really important and I'll tell you why. So when I go over to, oops, when I go over to get owner contact information, we're gonna re-hit the API to skip trace. So now that I have all those uh, properties, so say you have like a thousand properties, I'm gonna wanna now hit the skip trace API so if I go to that, 
you'll see it right here, the documentation load up. And that's where I'm basically just formatting it into a bunch of different calls for um, that specific address, right? So um, the API call is already set for you, but just so you see how it looks, this is how we're formatting it. So street, city, state, pretty straightforward. And I'm saying, hey, give me the owner contact information for this. So I'm gonna test that step. And then I have the contact information. So you'll see the first name, last name. Again, some of this may be blurred out just because we can't show you uh, like personal contact info on YouTube so easily. But I have all the different kinds of phone numbers. It tells you it's a landline, a mobile number, um, who the carrier is, if it's on the DNC list, which is of course really important. Um, and then the score is just like, hey, how confident are we that this is the right phone number for this person so you'll get that score we'll also have emails as well and that's down in one of these areas let me see i know it's somewhere in here so if we have the emails you'll see an email oh, okay empty array so this person we might not have an email for let's see if we have it for somebody else email yeah so this person has an email so now that we have that step done, we're gonna format the lead data. And there's this giant uh, JavaScript right here. And basically that's just gonna put it into a nice organized format for us so that um, we can create a separate document out of it. And here you see we've actually merged everything about um, these people into a nice organized uh, CSV file. So if they have multiple phone numbers, multiple emails, all that kind of stuff, you will get that here. But now we have two distinct properties, um, with the owner info and that's going to set us up perfectly for this next section, which is like, how do you want to deliver it? So as a, an Excel file, um, this will create a document that will have property leads, batch data, and then it'll have the um, current date in it. And it will create that Excel file for you right there. And that is what then gets pushed into the email notification. Now, I don't have this wired up, but depending on what you want to do here and how, how you want to deliver it, um, whether you're using SendGrid or your own email account to send it to yourself or distribution, email um, that's totally up to you but this is where you'd go to configure the email and then just put in some really basic html that drops in the the file so um, nothing too too crazy there um, the summarize results um, this one isn't like you know too crazy of a step not totally necessary but um, it does give you hey how many leads um, what's the highest score execution date that kind of stuff so just basic info that you could actually pull into um, this email if you want on the merge fields. And then last one here is pushing to a CRM. So again, I, there's tons of different CRMs out there. Um, you know, have to, you'll have to choose what works best for you, but basically um, you can choose a node or, you know, an uh, API call to uh, either uh, post or uh, update a, a lead within your database and depending on what you key off of. But, um, this is where you could do that as well. So if you have say, uh, new leads or you're going to update leads, this is where you do that. Um, HubSpot has a creator update, uh, upserting. That was the word I was looking for creator update feature. And then, um, yeah, you just pick whatever properties that you want to map to. So let's say you don't want all this information. That's totally fine. Uh, you may not want all that information, but uh, you may also want to map it to some very specific items here. So um, if I was using, say, like the state region, right? I mean, I may actually pull in, you know, state right here. So that's kind of how that would work. So you see the, the values, Texas for this one. Um, and then, you know, what may often work for a lot of people is like just dumping all this into notes so that 
uh, a note's part of the contact, so you're not mapping, you know, 50 fields or whatever. So anyways, that's uh, pretty much it. It's not a super complicated uh, workflow, but again, if you want to automatically get new leads delivered to uh, your, your CRM or your email on a regular basis, you can do that. Um, big question, of course, is gonna be, um, well, like how, do, how does this work with the batch data API? How much does it cost? It's, it's definitely not free, uh, but I'll, I will show you real quick. If you want to get an API key, uh, you can do that and you can test it through our sandbox. So right here, you can do mock server and you can do things, uh, do things through that uh, in the meantime. So you'll see the, you know, uh, URL changes here for which, uh, which URL you're actually calling. But if you're ready to go and you want to actually test this, um, the way you do it is you log into your actual um, account here, and then you can go into the back end of batch data and just create an API key. So we have other videos on that. I'll drop one in the comment section. And then next thing is pricing. How does this work? So you can load your wallet and do a per call. Uh, you pay per call. So um, every time you search for a property, you're going to pay, um, you know, a certain amount per, per call there. So you can check out our pricing page if you want to know more. Uh, but that's pretty much it on how to use um, our batch data property API with this flow in at n to be able to find new leads for your business. So I encourage you guys to check it out. Um, let me know what you think. Leave a comment below and like the video and subscribe. And we're going to have more of these coming up soon. So thanks, everyone.